Good morning, everyone. Or when you're watching this, it's probably the afternoon, uh, but it's still morning here and it's a little chilly. So I have my sweatshirt and my coffee, uh, but we'll, we'll get started. Today, we are talking about fish adaptations. Now, adaptable was one of our vocabulary words, right? It means being able to adjust to different conditions. So some animals have special traits that help them survive in different habitats. So we will be focusing on fish today and what adaptations they have to live in habitats like the coral reef or the open ocean. Uh, and once we create a fish with different adaptations, we'll draw it and write about it. Now on the lesson plan, there is um, the PowerPoint slides that I'll be going through with you. So if you would rather do this on your own today uh, or just with a parent, that's fine. All the information is on the slides. If you wanna go through it with me, uh, we will be making the same fish together and drawing it and writing about it. So it's up to you. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. So if you wanna join me, you can. We'll make the same fish. Here we go. So fish adaptations. First, I want you to try saying that. Yeah, adaptations. That's a four syllable word. So wherever it lives, a fish has to find something to eat and to keep from being eaten. Uh, all fish have predators and all fish can be predators. Uh, it's part of the food chain. Each kind of fish has evolved unique adaptations that help it make a living in its habitat. So today, you will design a fish with the right adaptations to survive. You'll pick a body shape, a mouth, and a fish pattern. Try to pick a body, mouth, and pattern that would all work well together. Look through the following slides, then draw your fish. You will then use the information from the slides to write about your, how your fish survives in its habitat. So let's get started. First, we need to pick a fish body shape. Now we have three choices. We have a rocket, a pancake, and a noodle. So we will pick one, and I'm going to read um, about each one for you, and then we'll decide. So this is uh, the rocket body. It's long and streamlined. It can swim fast in a straight line in open water. Right? There's lots of room. In that habitat, its speed lets it catch other fish easily. But it can't turn tightly, so it is less able to steer in close quarters on the coral reef. So with this body, it can swim fast in open water, but it has a hard time turning through the coral reef where there's a lot of plants um, and and rocks and other animals has a much harder time. It needs open space. Next is the pancake body, which is a thin flat body like a pancake. It can make tight turns and swim through passages on the coral reef. Oh, so it's like the opposite of the rocket body. In the coral reef, it can catch other fish or escape from predators easily. But 
It can't swim very fast in a straight line in open water. So it is not safe away from the reef. Hey, let's read about the noodle body. Here we go. Uh, the noodle body, of course, is a long noodle body. It can hide in cracks on the coral reef. And in this habitat, it can wait for other fish to come along and then reach out and grab them. So it's sneaky. But it is a very slow swimmer and cannot swim well in the open water. I should say well. I made a spelling mistake. Okay, we need to pick one. The, the pancake body and the noodle body survive best in the coral reef. Right? They're slow, uh, but they're good at hiding in the coral reef and they can make tight turns through the coral reef. Uh, they don't do well in the open water. The rocket body does well in the open water, but not in the coral reef. So, hmm, I think I am going to pick the rocket body. If you want to do the same drawing and writing as me, you can make the same choice. If you want to do pancake or noodle, that's fine. Okay, so pick one, lock it in your mind, and let's go ahead and choose our mouth. All right, here are the fish mouth types. There's four of them. Uh, we're going to pick one again, and I'll show you the next four slides so we can get more information about each mouth type. All right, first one gulps other fish. So this fish has a gulping mouth that opens wide like a trap door. Fish with this mouth can come up from below and swallow fish whole. So it comes up and then traps them. Its mouth makes this fish a good predator. It can even eat bigger fish than it is. Huh. Okay, now we have the reef grazer. This has a grazing mouth that opens forward. The fish with this mouth eats hard corals from the coral reef. Its strong jaws can scrape off the coral tissue from the stony skeleton. It digests the coral and the algae living in the coral. A fish with this mouth can't eat other fish. So this it eats mostly small things off the coral reef. It picks them off. Ooh, bites other fish. This one has a biting mouth with sharp teeth that open to the front. Its mouth lets this fish grab and bite fish that swim in front of it. Its mouth makes this fish a good predator. It can even eat fish that are bigger than it is. Okay, this might go well with the rocket body. Uh, just remember the rocket body goes fast in the open water and can catch other fish because it's so fast. Well, this one could grab and bite them. All right, and then we have the bottom feeder. Whoops. The bottom feeder has a bottom feeding mouth that opens downward. A fish with this mouth eats small shrimp, crabs, and worms from the sandy bottom near the coral reef. It works like a vacuum cleaner to suck up its food. A fish with this mouth can't eat other fish. Okay, so when thinking about which mouth to pick, you want it to go with your body. So if you wanted the pancake or noodle body that live in the coral reef, you probably would do well with a reef grazer 
or even, you know, the noodle body jumps out and grabs things. So maybe the, the mouth that bites other fish. Even the bottom feeder, maybe for the pancake body. I liked the rocket body. And that means, mm, the gulping other fish might be a good match for the rocket body, right? Because it goes up and traps fish really quickly. Or even the bites other fish mouth, right? If it's swimming forward, it can bite a fish. I think I'm going to pick this mouth uh, just because I think I can draw it easily. <laughs> And it also goes well with the rocket body. They're both good predators. So you'll need to make your choice. Think about which habitat your body would live in and pick a mouth that would go well with that. Yeah. My rocket body would not go well with a bottom feeder, for instance or definitely not the reef grazer. The reef grazer's eating little things off the coral reef, which the rocket body doesn't do well in. They need open water. Okay. Okay, let's look at the fish patterns. We have silver, spotted, striped, and then there is an eye pattern. So again, you'll pick one. And we'll look through the next four slides for more information. And again, try to pick a pattern that would go with the habitat that your fish lives in. The first one is silver. This has a silver body color. Other fish can't see it in the open water. This lets fish with this color sneak up on other fish. So it's good in the open water which means it's good if you have a rocket body. Predators can see fish with this color on the coral reef or in a school of fish with a different pattern. So this, this pattern is not good for a fish living in the coral reef. Next, we have the spotted pattern. Where, uh, so this fish has a spotted coloration. This pattern blends in with the shapes and colors of the coral reef. Other fish can't see it very well on the reef. That's a good thing. So the spotted pattern is good on the coral reef. Out in the open water, this pattern will be quite visible <clears throat> to predators or prey fish. So not good in the open water. Uh, now we have the striped pattern. When this fish is part of a school, the stripes will confuse predators. It's a good thing. All the fish blend together and a predator can't see separate fish. But predators or prey fish will be able to see this fish on the coral reef, so it's not good on the coral reef, or if it's by itself in the open water. Really, this fish does best in a school of fish on the open water, so not on the coral reef. Now we have an eye pattern. This has a distinctive eye spot on the tail. And this fools predators into thinking that the fish is going in the opposite direction. And they think since the eye is over here, it's going to swim that way, and then the fish can escape by going that way. So this gives the fish time to escape before they're caught. However, this is a bad pattern for a predator since other fish can see it coming and escape. So this eye pattern would be good on the coral reef. It's too bright for the open water. Okay, so now, hopefully, pick the body 
you picked a uh, mouth and a pattern. And we're gonna draw a simple picture to show those things together and we'll label it. Uh, I'm not looking for anything super detailed or elaborate. Uh, I just wanna know what your choices were. So let's go back to the body. Uh, I, I was picking the rocket body, so that's what I'm going to draw. If you pick something else, that's fine. I'll just go ahead and, and draw that body and then we'll add the mouth to the front. Remember, just basic shapes are fine. And I'm just copying what's on here as best as I can. I think mine turned out okay, actually. And I'm going to label it rocket body. So I'll draw a line pointing to it and write rocket body. I did that really quickly. You will probably need more time. That's fine. Let's go ahead and pause so you can finish and then we'll move on to the mouth. And moving on in three, two, one. And I'm gonna show you on the big screen what mine looks like so far. So make sure you're labeling it so you remember what you chose and what it's called. All right, let's go to the mouth. Okay, so I, I had chosen the bites other fish, the one with the teeth to go with my rocket body since um, that's good at catching other fish. The rocket body is usually a predator in the open water. So if you chose um, pancake body or noodle body, you might wanna pick something else. Or you can do the same as me. So I'll show you again, there's the gulps other fish. And this actually could go with the rocket body too. It's a good predator. The reef grazer, this could work with the pancake body or the noodle body. The bites other fish would go with the rocket body or the noodle body. And the bottom feeder would probably go best with the pancake body uh, or a noodle body. Well, probably not a noodle body. Okay. So let me go back to that page. Go ahead and add the front of your fish with that mouth. And they're all here. I'm doing bites of their fish. And when you're done drawing, you do want to label it again.
If you need more time, go ahead and pause. I finished my drawing and I labeled it. In the last part, we need to pick a pattern. I'm moving on in three, oh, two, three, two, one. And now we have our fish pattern. I chose silver since uh, the rocket body does best in the open water. Um, the only other one that does well in the open water is striped, and that's only if it's in a school of fish. If you have a coral reef fish, you'll need to pick spotted or eye pattern. Okay, remember the eye pattern. Uh, I'll show you the picture. So we have silver. To do that, you just need like a pencil or gray crayon. You can shade your fish in. Spotted, there's all these little spots on the front. It looks like two more colorful spots on the back with some spots on the fins. Um, at any point, if you wanna pause, you can. We have the striped. Remember this is only uh, good for the open water if it's in a school of fish. So striped, you could just have some black stripes with some maybe other colors mixed in. This has some yellow. And then the eye pattern, you want that distinctive black dot on the back that looks kind of like an eye. This does well on the coral reef. Okay, ah, I'm going ahead. Okay, I'm going to give you time to uh, do your pattern. I'm gonna go get silver. And when you're done, remember to label. Which pattern you chose. So I'm labeling mine silver pattern. Okay. okay, so if you need more time, that's fine. You can go ahead and pause. Um, otherwise, we're going to move to the writing portion. So, Let's take a minute to look at our pictures, right? Make sure your picture has the label for the body, the mouth, and the pattern. And then uh, this is the first assignment for today. So you just take a picture and upload it under fish adaptation picture on Class Dojo. Or you can just message me with a picture. Like some of you have been doing, that's fine. Uh, and then we have the writing. So you do need your journal. Okay, so your journal will have the date in the corner. It's 5 21 20. And the title is Fish Adaptations. In the lesson plan, 
and on the PowerPoint slides. Uh, you will see the questions and also there's a sample fill in the blank paragraph if you want to use that. So let me show you those. And then if you want to stay and do it with me, you can, or you can fill it out all on your own. Okay. Here are the questions. First, what body type, mouth type, and color pattern does your fish have? You can use your picture to help you with that. What habitat is best for your fish to live in and why? So really think about uh, your body type, your mouth, your coloring or pattern. You know, what habitat are those better for? The coral reef or the open water? And then, you know, Try to give me two reasons why, if you can. And finally, what food does your fish eat and why? You'll really have to think about the mouth for this one. Uh, and that's it, you'll, you'll write those in complete sentences. If you want some help with sentence starters, you can use this fill in the blank, which is on the lesson plan too. And this is what I'll be using uh, right now. So if you want to do this with me, stay tuned. Otherwise, you know, go off on your own. And when you're done, take a picture of your journal and upload it under Fish Adaptation Journal on Class Dojo. Okay. So uh, I <clears throat> am going to show you the same paragraph, fill in the blank, but on a Word document, it's a little easier for me. So it starts with my fish has a blank body that is blank. Go ahead and write, my fish has a, and then I'm going to go to the slides and we'll fill that in. So my fish has a, and actually, you can go ahead and tell me the body. You have it on your picture. Right? Mine is the rocket body. So my fish has a rocket body that is, and once you have that part, uh, we're ready to go. So pause if you need more time. I'm gonna move to the slides to fill in that next part. So I chose the rocket body, right? So I'm gonna write that it has a, or that is long and streamlined. So that's what I would write. I'm going to flip through the other slides, pause it and get whatever information you need. It will be in the first line. So here's the pancake body. Right, so you say that it has a body that is thin and flat. And the noodle body, I could say it has a body that is long. I would just keep it simple, say it's long, okay? So I'm writing long and streamlined. Put that in, long and streamlined. And I'm highlighting the parts that I am including that go with my fish. They might be different for your fish depending on the parts you chose. Okay. Pause if you need more time. We'll move on to the mouth. So it says a blank mouth that blank. I'm gonna go to the slides for this again. Now, mine was a biting mouth. So you may have chosen a gulping mouth that opens wide like a trap door. And pause if you had that. 
Maybe you did the reef grazer. It has a grazing mouth that opens forward. If you're like me, it has a biting mouth that has sharp teeth that open to the front. And then there was also the bottom feeder, right? It has a bottom feeding mouth that opens downward. So hopefully you were able to pause on the right one, get the information you need, and you will fill it in on your paragraph. So mine's a biting mouth that has sharp teeth that open to the front your information might be a little different. Okay, pause if you need more time. I'm moving on to the pattern color. This I don't need the slides for. I had a silver color. If you did striped or spotted, you would use that word pattern. It's a color, so I'm going to erase pattern. Okay. I'm going to move on to the habitat now. So the best habitat for my fish is the, and for this assignment, you're just going to say the coral reef or the open water. We know there's more habitats than that, but most of these slides talked about those two habitats specifically. So my fish lives in the open water habitat. That's the best one for its body type and its coloring. So the best habitat for my fish is the open water. Yours might be coral reef. And then we need two reasons why. Because blank, also blank. So think of two reasons and fill them in. For mine, it's best in the open water because um, let me go back to the slides. If you need more time to write, this first part up to because, pause, but I'm gonna to go to the slides so we can get some information. Okay. So mine had a rocket body. And that's best for the open water because its speed lets it catch other fish easily. Okay. So that's what I'm gonna write in that first blank. I'll flip through the other bodies so you can get any information you need. Just be sure to pause really quickly. We have the pancake body. The noodle body. I think those were the only bodies. So noodle body, pancake body, rocket body. And I'm writing its speed lets it catch other fish easily. And then we need one more reason. I'm gonna look at the colors and patterns. So finish writing what you need for the first reason, and then we'll, we'll look at those next reasons on the uh, color pattern slides together. So go ahead and write also. And once you have that, uh, we'll move on. So pause, press play when you're ready after also.
And we'll get another reason about why it does well in its habitat. So mine is silver. And this lets it blend in in the open water so it can sneak up on other fish. Huh? I'll flip through the other patterns. Pause so you can get the information you need with the spotted, the striped, and the eye pattern. Okay. Find why that pattern or color is good for its habitat. So I'm writing also silver color and do the open water, which helps it sneak up. Okay, pause. Do you need more time? The last sentence is about the best food. We'll look at the mouth for that. I had a biting mouth. So you wanna say what the best food is and why. So I'm going to go back to those slides. Again, pause when I get to your slide so you can get the information out. You'll probably want to write this first part so you're ready to go. The best food for my fish is. Once you have that, we'll move on. So pause and play when you're ready. Okay, here are the mouths. So the best food for my fish is, here's the gulping mouth, the grazing mouth, the biting mouth, and the bottom feeding mouth. I did the biting mouth and um, the best food for my fish is other fish because its mouth can grab and uh, can grab and bite fish and that swim in front of it. That's what I'll write. So pause, get your information. Best food for my fish is because its mouth bite fish that, that one. Okay. Whew, that was a lot of going back and forth and pausing. So hopefully you made it through. Uh, I know this was a challenging one a long one, um, so it's okay if yours looks a little different than mine. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to change the lesson a little to make it short and simple uh, because this one was longer than planned, okay?
Pause if you need more time. I'm going to stop sharing this screen. Okay, when you're done with your journal, just take a picture, upload it under Fish Adaptation Journal. And yeah, tomorrow we'll have a simple lesson, and then you have a three day weekend. So uh, lots of uh, relaxation ahead, hopefully. And for now, I hope you have a nice afternoon, a great evening. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, everyone.